Good afternoon, Mr. Friendly. Terrible thing, isn't it? Yes, yes, indeed, Mr. Barlow, yes. She seemed always to be on the go. She seemed indestructible. Ah, I know how Mrs. Sharples must be feeling. It's like having a limb cut off, you know. I had the same, of course, with Ida when she died. She was taken off suddenly. Yes, yes. Well, there'll be a great deal to do. I hurried from my sisters as soon as I heard. Ah, well, I won't stop. I'll only be in way. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, give my condolences to uh, Lily if you see her, will you? Certainly, Mr. Barlow. Oh. Ah, Mr. Oh, Sharples. How are you? You look very well. I'm deeply sorry. It happened. She was 68. Got rid of them bees in your bonnet, have you? Yes, yes, I'm much rested, thank you. I've been playing some music, a little reading. Things have been very quiet. Oh, you want to stop fighting the battles of the world, living on your nerves. Yes, perhaps I was taking too much on. You don't want to run to jump into your grave. God knows it comes round soon enough, any road. You want to be a bit more come day, go day, God send Sunday. You do look well, though. Hello, Mrs. Shamples. Yeah, I'm very sorry. Hello, Polly. Heard about it round at Chippy. Do you want any help? I brought my stuff. No, it's all done, love. I laid her out myself. I think she'd have liked it if she'd have known. All right. I just thought, how come I get a bit quieter? Ta-da. Ta-da. Hello, Mrs. I always found her very willing. You found her catty and nasty and don't claim anything else than a swindly. She wasn't the biggest comedian we had round here, but she was good company for me. A foil, a partner in... Perhaps she wasn't the happiest of people. I don't think I ever saw her really smile. Well, she was a bit ashamed of her teeth, as a matter of fact. She wasn't the person who did a lot of smiling, I'll give you that, but in her later years she seemed more content in her own way. And you have taken it upon yourself to... See Mrs. Longhurst away. Well, I couldn't leave her in her own house. It's cold and it's cheerless and there's nobody there at night. Yeah. No, she's in there. I've been sleeping on a chair. I'll put Tatlock sitting with her at the moment. Is there anything that I can do? Well, I've got to get her club or over to Mulberry Street, seeing that the vultures are gathering over her bits and bobs. Well, I'll take those round for you. Hey, she didn't have much of a life. Her husband's a bird was a real monkey, Percy Longhurst. Used to knock holy hell out of her. It was his occupation. Look down at the shunting yards. Big beefy fella. Died about 20 years... No, I'm telling a lie. Died in 1946, a year before their Lily was 21. Mm. Aye. Drank too much down at the Lord Nelson. Big womanizer he was. Well, she... Oh, hello, Mr. Swindley. How are you keeping her? Oh, I'm much better now, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Well, you want to look after yourself, you know. Don't let things get you down too much. You're off for a bit then, are you? Aye, I thought I'd just pop home and make myself a bit of dinner. I'll bring you some back on a plate. Oh, I'm not all that struck. Well, just a bit of pie or something. You can't just go living on cups of tea. Would it be convenient for me to pay my last respects now, Mrs. Sharpley? Thank you. You know, she, she looks ten years younger. Ah, she does, doesn't she? She was the youngest of the lot of us, you know. Oh, she took a bit short, didn't it? Aye. It, it, it's a funny thing, but I'd forgotten how small she were. She's not more than a five-footer. No. There wasn't enough fat on her to fry an egg, either. Oh, well. I think it's much use sending that slip back to Maudsley Street. It's full of holes. Coming for dusting? No, no, no. You mustn't take everything on yourself, love. Oh, well, nobody else seems very struck on taking it on, scooting off to Tom Marinas or whatever. I knew she'd never get any further than Ainsdale Beach. It's much more her line of country. I I'll see. It's Mr. Rogers, Mrs. Sharples. Oh, yes. Well, I won't offer you any texts or tracts to lean on, Mrs. Sharples. You've always found comfort in the Bible yourself. Thank you very much. Is there anything practical I can do? Well, you can meet Mr. Swindler for a start. This is Mr. Rogers. I'm delighted, sir. Ah, oh, Mr. Hodges, I've heard some splendid things about you. <laughs> my student has written to me telling me of the new spirit abroad in the congregation. Yes, well, I'll be glad to see you back. You're, uh, you're quite well. Yes, much recovered, thank you. I... You knew Mrs. Longhurst? Not as well as I should, no. No, no, no. She was one of these people who know that it was so easy to put upon. The runners of errands, the baby minders, scrubbers of floors. She'd very little life of her own, I'm afraid. What, uh, what arrangements have been made for funeral? Well, now that Mr. Swindley's back, I'm sure he's the right man to take care of that side of things. Oh, well, that's most kind of you to say so. Mr. Sharples, who would make the decisions on these matters? The 
the remains and so on. Lady Doolally, I suppose. I beg your pardon? Lady Doolally, her daughter, it's up to her to decide. Her Lily and her wilf. And that's a ten. Four at ten pounds. With bonuses, we should be well inside. About 52 quid, I should think. I'll take a lot of sorting out. Here. Look at that. That handbag and compact we bought her at Christmas. She's not used either of them. But perhaps she was saving it for something special. Oh, sit down, Lily. This lot can wait. I don't know what she's got in the way of policy. There might even be a will. There's a lot of paperwork I'll need sorting out, and no one else is going to do it if I don't. Who's this? Your dad. Yeah. Suppose she'd want to go in the family grave. Here is some more. What I can't understand is why she never told us she'd been under the doctor. Try night, try. Did you ever see her taking any? I thought she'd see us on the ground the way she used to run around with the housework when she came round. She ought to have come and lived with us, but honestly, well, we never got on. She was always at me. We just didn't have the room, love. You know that. This is where it all used to happen, love. Fifteen rounds every night. And my mother winning on a technical knockout. I used to sit on the stairs listening to them. Because there was no light in my bedroom and it sounded worse in the dark. You seem quite contented recently. <sighs> yes, I suppose so. No good starting having a good time when you're 50, though, is it? <sighs> she always seemed to have a grudge against me. I'm sure you're exaggerating. No, I honestly, Will. I think it's because my father started going out with women when I was born. Well, what are we going to do about this? Always seemed fond enough of the kids. Ah, oh, she was fond of me in a way. Well, what are we going to do with all their treasures? Perhaps her two mates. She was always a beggar for pin cushions from Scarborough and dinner bells from Cairo. Funny how you never know your mother at all, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Take it up. Give us a pint, look. Oh, hi, hi. Ale, smiling, moan. Aren't you, Coco? A lot of drinking days left in me, you know, before I get stuck in a big wooden box. Hey, has anyone told uh, Minnie Colwell? Oh, she's still convalescent. Is she? Yeah, she just got over a taxi. Have just seen her? Ah, uh, Mr. Sharp will tell her. I suppose. Hey, stroll on. I wouldn't like that job myself. You know, it'd be like talking to a little kid, wouldn't it? You know the way it's like when little doggies go to sleep? Oh, I must say, you're very breezy about the whole affair, Mr. Fairclough. Annie, darling, I saw far too many of my uppos topped in the Andrew to start skiking about someone who had a full whack. I mean, she was 70, wasn't she? No, I think you've got to get a bit of living in while you're here. So give us a big kiss there, darling. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. Mrs. Coleswell, I'm Dad, so... Tell you look very well and all, darling, too. You're nice and brown, aren't you? Did you find yourself a, a millionaire? Oh, it was lovely. Oh, I had a lovely time. Oh, aren't they back? Mrs. Coleswell, love. I'll tell you what, I've... Have a brandy with me, darling. Put hers in your chest. Oh, brandy. Make your toenails crispy. I came back all the way in the taxi. Mr. Hodges paid for it. Oh, the weather was lovely. Um, I haven't brought you all presents. Uh, just a tea caddy for Ina and a new purse for Martha. Um, Mrs. Corbett. That's right, darling. You just sit yourself down there. Make yourself a dome, eh? And get that down here. Thank you. And lang me your uh, old lung reek. <laughs> Oh, it's nice to be back. It was quite windy on the prom some days. Minnie, love. It's, it's bad news, love, about Mrs. Longhurst. Martha Longhurst is dead. 
It was... It was her heart. But I had a postcard from her today saying she'd got a new costume for her holiday. She collapsed in here, love. It wasn't painful for her. Where's Bobby? I want Bobby. <laughs> Lovely boy, it's nice to see him again. Would you like something to drink? Why don't you go in and see him, you crater, then you'll feel better. Oh, I'd rather not, Ina, really, I wouldn't. What are you scared of? She won't bite you. Even when it was my mother, I couldn't bear to go and see the body. Oh, Ina, don't ask me. Well, it's no skin off my nose, but it is usual to go and pay some sort of respect, however fleeting, to the dead Minnie Colwell. Well, I, I want to remember her as she was. She looks all right. She looks as well as ever she did. must just finish like fainting everyone that liveth and believeth in me shall not die forever oh, I, I just can't Look, believe older and wiser heads and ours have tried to get through to the afterlife so just forget it Minnie Colwell we just haven't got the mental equipment hello they've started here if you want to exercise your brain power go and get me some dishes done Hello, Billy. I haven't seen you for years. How have you been keeping? Oh, fair to middle, Mrs. Sharples. Bit sudden, weren't it? Yes. You remember Billy Rabbit, don't you? Used to be a mate of Percy's. Hello. I heard about it in the Conservative Club. I hadn't seen much of her lately, but we were very close when Percy was alive. She's in there. Right, you know. She was under a doctor. Nine months. Pills three times a day. She was always doing something on Sly. I don't know why that quack didn't make her cut down a lot on her scrubbing. Well, she wanted the money, though, Ina. Well, he signed a death certificate just like that, and we all thought there'd be a post-mortem. You fixed her up very nicely. Thanks very much. Find your own way out, will you? I shall. Thank you for coming. Who's that, Eva? I told you. Billy Rabbit lives round Mill Street somewhere. Used to be an overlooker at North End. Married that Peggy Watson, sir, with a bad leg. Oh, they'll all be round. All that Morden Street, that from that end. And there were a lot of relatives of his and all that stuck up for her while she was there. Is she getting buried with Percy? Nowhere else to put her. They won't open a new grave for her, you know. Ah, well, they'll rest very uneasy together. Then they all is dead. Oh, I've just remembered. We were going to the Whit Walks together today. We were going in the bus. Look, do you feel like cutting some sandwiches and some tongue and lettuce over there? All the tribes of Israel will be traipsing through here today. All right, Tina. Come in. I wondered if I could be of any help. Oh, bless you, lass. Yes, you can act as what you're in here, if you will. She's in there and you might uh, keep a look on her, will you? Don't let them hang about too long, eating me out of house known when they come. Just let them have one quick look and then tell them of the refreshments at the funeral, we hope. Where are you going, Nina? Oh, and we only want relatives and friends. If that old Mrs Whittle comes round from Navigation Street, just you show her the door. She wanders round looking at folks as laid out, just out of pure curiosity. You're not going anywhere, Nina. I'm going to Martha's house and you can come with me when you've got a grip on yourself. What are you going doing? Well, I'm not a trustee, but I'm just going to overlook those longers, going swooping and pawing on all her belongings. They'll need a referee. Could I do the washing up? Oh, I'd leave it for now. Well, I'd like to do something. Ina's very upset, I can tell. We all are, Mrs Caldwell. <laughs> That'll be St Winifred's. We were going to see them walk. Oh, it's it, Ina, very hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Exactly what I intend to do. I'm very pleased to see that Albert Tutlock here is showing his sign of respect. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's seen good service as this arm band in this street. Well, I remember the time when widows wore black for at least three months. Nowadays, you're laid out in one, buried in three, forgotten in five. Oh, well, never mind that. Here's a toast to her. Whatever she is, Martha Dallin. All the best. Oh, well, I must say, I feel ten years older when somebody goes. You should talk. What about me? I feel as if I met him for the last round-up. Yeah, we'll get another one before you go. <laughs> I'll get lost. Hey, Albert, uh, what sort of a girl was she like when she was young? Yeah, she was a good-looking wench. Uh -huh. Lovely red hair. She used to be a doubler's at Chasen's Mill. She were going to get married to a chap called Eddie, some, but uh, Eddie Brown. He got gassed at war, and so she married Purse. Uh -huh. All blown and no finesse. He quietened down a bit towards the end, but she was 50 then and he was dying. Ah, oh, she always looked as if she'd lost her quid and found an eight, you know. <laughs> yeah, I reckon she had most of the time. <laughs> he, he, she was a right man just before she got wed. <laughs> Used to run everywhere. She, she couldn't walk, you know. And, and a good mimic, too. Mm -hmm. And always had lots of chaps after her. Hey, and do you know, she had two kids. She had a lad besides Lily. But he got drowned in Wolseley's Brook at back end of 1929. Oh, yeah. He'd just be about three. Oh, I never knew that. Oh. Is that right, Alva? Of course it is. Well, Stroll, I mean, you never know the dicky bit about people after they've gone, do you? Oh, you're right. Well, we're sending a wreath, aren't we, from the public bar, eh? Oh. Well, I think we owed a bit of money for the beer we didn't buy, eh? Uh, I suppose we could have sent a few more milk stouts into the snug, couldn't oh, we? Oh, yes. Yes. Is it oh, now, oh, make, let me make up that threesome in the snug. I feel about ready for it. Bit of quiet backbiting and knitting till my turn comes. You know, I really don't see that that kind of comment is called for, Mrs. Tanner, with Mrs. Longhurst not yet cold. I'm just looking life in the face, Mrs. Walker, and spitting in its eye. And I'll have a big gin, cos the sun is shining and you never know your luck. Well, I'm afraid the prospect isn't as rosy as you think. These do have a £10 face value, but uh, they were made into open policies quite a while back. They stopped payments on them? That's right. They're worth, uh, one, seven and two, two, three and a penny, another one the same. They're only penny policies, do you see? Now, she did keep this one up, so there's, uh, fifteen pounds plus three, fourteen and two bonus. That means you'll get, uh, twenty-two, seven and six altogether. Only 22 pounds? Yes, and that won't buy a funeral these days, will it? <laughs> Still, it'll help. Oh, just a minute. There's a concessions arrears on this one. What's that? Well, it means two and eleven less, actually. Um, you see, that's a sort of amnesty on uh, subscriptions during the general strike, and your mother didn't keep up the payments, so, uh, well, it'll be two and eleven less. I'll drop it by in the morning. Save your walk. Thanks very much. Well, I'll be getting along. I'm very sorry about all this, Mrs. Hatton. Your mother had a very good name in the neighbourhood. I'll let yourself out. Well, that's that then. It'll have to come out of the holiday money. Ah, oh, no, look, it can't do that. It's all fixed. Is there nothing you want to keep? Give over, Wilf. I'll keep the photographs and one or two brooches. Well, where would we put that? I see what you mean. Come in, Mrs. Sharples. Good afternoon. Hello, Mrs. Sharples. I've come to check up that you've no objection to your mother being laid out in the vestry. Oh, it's very kind of you, Mrs. Sharples. And I assume you'll be having to do that afterwards. Uh, no. We thought we'd just have close family at Normanton's over the cafe. 
Well, of course, you've been away so long you wouldn't know how many people knew your mother. You wouldn't get them all in at Normanton's. Is it necessary? So we suggest you have the do in the vestry. Look, Mrs. Sharples, we, we've got to go up to the undertaker. Why don't you have a route round? A what? I mean, a good look round. See what you can find. Come on, look. We shan't be long. Anything you like. We shan't be long. And thanks very much. Fancy this chair. What's going to happen to all this food she got in? It'll be going bad. Oh, we'll use it up for funeral. I can't find that brooch, can't you? Hey, there's a picture of you there with that sailor at New Brighton. I've forgotten about that. The picture of Madame and all when she was on munitions. She's pretending to be scanning. <laughs> She'll make you laugh. I'll look at the master. Just look at it. Sixty-eight years, and now to show for it. What about all this bedding? Oh, here's this new bus bodice she bought, Tina. Oh, put it down. I can't think why we all live separate these last few years. Mm, like sell block three in here. She's going to be very happy living here on her own. She was quite independent, though. I bet she didn't buy many records either lately. By gum, made of the mountains. Oh, here's this novel I lent her about that nurse and the coloured doctor. You've got to take it back with you. Hey, this is one of them rare records you make yourself, them metal ones that you make on the Golden Mile. Oh, it's a bit ruined now, Ina. Oh, oh, don't put it on. I wonder if it's that one we made who went on mill trip. Oh, Ina, I'd rather not hear it. Oh, don't be silly, you've listened to records before, haven't you? Oh, it's like reading our letters. Get away, it'll only be two daft women laughing in a booth. I love you and you can't rub it off, even if you do go back. Please, please don't make me upset. Go on, you, you say it. I love you, Phil. It's on, it's on the record. Go on, love. Oh, Phil. Oh, no, don't, there's no need. Do look, look, it's nearly up. Come on, smile, it's sing. It, it doesn't matter, it's only something. Oh, Phil, you're a clown. I'm looking for an angel. But angels are so few, and until the day that one comes that along, That song, they were plugging it in all the song titles on Golden Mile, 1934. She said Philip to the year I had my operation. Percy Longus had scooted off to West Hartlepool with that hairdresser. Mother that went to Blackpool on her own with Lily. But until the day that one comes along... Uh, come on, love, it's nearly up. The light's going out. 
to sing my love songs to. But until the day that one comes along, Oh, was Heather? That we shall never know. But she came back to Percy Longhurst, didn't she? Oh, I can't believe it. Not Martha. Well, that's one summer she got a kiss without a kick coming after it. And God knows, one summer in 68 isn't all that much to live for. Mm -hmm. 